Hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. So in our last video, we implemented something called an action, which is currently attached to our moving entity. And the action you can see here is coughing. And it is brought on by an effect that is also on our MPC. Um, and the effect is sick. So my MPCs are currently sick, and that will sometimes prompt them to cough. So currently all of them are sick, and that's not what we want in the future. We want some of them to be sick and most of them to be healthy. And when the sick ones are coughing, then there will be a risk of the people around it to become infected. And the way we're gonna find the people around it, we could do it in several different ways. But since I've gotten a couple of requests about collision handling, we will probably get into that now. And we could use that to find them. We could spawn either some object which has a collision box or just create a temporary collision box around our person with a certain size and then just get all of the um, NPCs that are intersecting with our collision box. And then we'll just loop through them and based on some value, they might get infected or not. So. We might not have time to do all of that in this video, but let's start. Let's start with the collision box. So go to your core package and create a new class called collision box. And this will keep a rectangle, which we've used before. I'm going to call mine bounds. So let's generate a constructor. And let's generate a getter for this bounds. And let's make a helper method. So public boolean collides with, and it takes another collision box, and let's call that other. So return if bounds intersects other get bounds. So for now, this will be enough. This will uh, be able to let us know if two collision boxes are intersecting. So let's use it. And the way we're going to do it, if we go to the game object class, um, I don't want to store a collision box in here because every update it will change. I mean, the position does as well. But whether it is you that are updating with your motion and with everything, maybe you want the collision box to be before your motion has been applied to your position or after your motion has been applied to your position and I don't want any weird states so it's not going to be kept as a variable inside of game object however I'm gonna make a an abstract uh, method that will fetch it for us so just say that there has to be a getter for get collision box and then we don't care if you store it as a variable or if you if you calculate it on the fly you can do that. All right, and we want another wrapper method that will help us tell um, if we're colliding. So colliding with, I think that's how I want it. Yeah, game object other. All right, that will be it for the game object class. Now moving on to the moving entity. I still don't think I'm going to start with storing it as a variable. We're going to start with calculating it on the fly. And it's just for simplicity. If we have to optimize at some point, we will. But right now, let's keep it simple. So handle collisions. All right, let's create this method. So what I want to do now is I want to ask the state for all of the game objects that are colliding with me. So, um, right, we have to take in the state in order to be able to do that. So let's do it. Let's take in the state and let's ask it. Um, get colliding game objects and pass in yourself. We haven't made this yet. So let's create that method inside of state and it will return a list of game object. Right, and we want this to be game object, not moving entity, and let's just call it let's call it game object, right? So what we want to return is our game objects list, 
and I'm using the stream API because I like it. And we want it to be filtered by, let's call it other. So other dot collides with, I think I want to call it collides with instead of colliding with. Um, and we can actually do just write colliding with first, write game object, and then you can put your cursor on it and shift F6 and you can rename it. So other collides with game object. And then we want to collect it to a list because it was a stream before. All right, so now we've gotten all of the game objects that are colliding with our game object. So we have that inside of here. So let's say for each um, handle collision without an S. So this is per uh, moving entity. And we want to create a right. So that this is what we want to do. Let's use a method reference here because we're using create this method. And OK, so it created an implementation, which isn't isn't what I wanted. So let's just um, and call this other. We didn't want an implementation. We actually want this to be an abstract uh, method that our subclasses will implement. So private abstract void handle collision, private abstract illegal private. All right, so protected, right, of course. So protected abstract void handle collision with some other game object. And this one, we can just close it. So now our player and our NPC has to implement this method. I'm just going to see Right, so we didn't implement get collision box. So let's do that. Get collision box. And it will return a new rectangle. So we have our position, int x, position, int y, size, get width, size, get height. And of course, we need to put it inside of a new collision box. That will be helpful. So just do that. And another one of these. Actually, let's do bup, bup. There we go. Did this end up one, two, there. All right, so if you haven't uh, done, moved several lines at once, it's the, um, sorry. You just um, mark it, and then you press Tab or Shift Tab to pull it back. OK, so this is what we want. And there is something, what else did we do? It was Collides With, right? That we also have to implement Collides With. Yes. Let's implement that in our moving entity as well. So Collides With. And if you start writing the method name, then IntelliJ will suggest and generate this for you. Very handy. So we know this if our collision box, get collision box, dot collides with other get collision box. So it's that easy. All right, I think we have the most simple things in place. So when we make this collision box in the future, we might want to add the motion. Just check the motion as well. Um, but we can do that later. OK, let's, let's implement something. Let's make something happen. Implement methods, implement handle collision. So now our MPC can tell us exactly what will happen when it collides with something. So for example, we can check if this game object is a player. Have they collided with us? What do we want to happen then? And we can say motion stop because we implemented that the last video. So this will, of course, make them just stop moving if they are colliding with us. But um, we're not going to implement colliding with them, or we're not going to make us stop, because then everyone's just going to stand still. But let's just try this and see what happens. And it says player is not abstract, and I forgot to implement that method. Let's just do it and let's hit play again. All right, so what will happen now is when we get close to these NPCs, 
they're gonna stop moving. So we haven't implemented inside the player class that it stops moving, um, therefore we can just walk through them. But for as long as they are colliding with us, they have to stand still. So they can't move now. And this is actually quite funny. If we just stand somewhere and let people sort of, since they're not very smart at the moment, they're just moving towards their targets. Um, so it's like catching flies. <laughs> and there you can see that that's our bounds. That is our unit's um, size. Since our tiles are 64 by 64 pixels, which means that we will probably want to keep a size only for our collision box so that our collision box isn't quite that large but um, that will be in another video look at this cool effect um, we could of course do a whole lot of fun things if we wanted i'm just gonna take a screenshot of this because i thought that was cute all right and um, if we wanted to we could for example say something like if other instance of MPC. So the first thing is we know that this is an MPC now, right? So just cast it to an MPC. There we go. So if we wanted to do clear effects, we could. We have to generate this method, but let's do it inside of the moving entity and let's just say effects.clear. All right. So now. they still stop in their tracks because yeah when we move past them they have to stop but what else is happening is we are basically healing them so all of the npcs that we are touching now they're no longer sick we have cleared their effects only you can't see it um if they're already coughing they finish coughing but the effect is gone so they won't cough again so you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. This is just a, a simple implementation. And if we want some objects that we can't move through, we can try something with that later. Also, if you, if you have an idea on the setting, then maybe we could add some sort of hinders or, you know, something like that. I haven't figured out where I want this game to take place yet. So I think that this will be it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Hey, Doa.